Hey, you guys. <coughs> I'm here in my oncology uh, appointment. And uh, here's the room. Looks familiar. <laughs> and I'm waiting. It's, uh, uh, it's in the morning and I didn't get enough sleep last night. I feel so tired. And uh, I've been... I've been uh, trying to throw up, but nothing's coming out. And uh, the pressure in my spleen is really bothering me this morning. So, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you uh, updated, you know, whatever our conversation is going to be today. And uh, hopefully it's uh, she could offer me something for relief. Hello, so um, we are back home and um, got to talk to my oncologist and um, discuss about the pain that I've been feeling in my spleen. So um, it was not a very, um, it's not a very good visit because um, for one thing, my hemoglobin didn't change. Um, they did a, uh, uh, well, I still have that thing here. Um, they did a blood check and my hemoglobin is still the same. And, um, she told me that she, that re they really could not be able to help me with my spleen. And she thinks that, um, the spleen is not the one that's causing the pain, um, in my, um, in my right, on my left side. So she said that, you know, my spleen was not really that big enough. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of, you know, just like before, but just frustrated. Um, it's so hard when you feel so much pain, especially at night. And uh, doctors would tell you that there's nothing wrong. It, you know, your spleen is not big enough to cause that much pain. And uh, your last CT did not really show anything bad or wrong going on in your pancreas. Um, the only thing that she can think of was the liver. It might be the liver. Well, I asked her, if it's the liver, should the pain be uh, more localized in the right area? And then she said, well, yeah, but it's scattered in your liver. Uh, she said that I have a total of 50 little lesions in my liver. Um, that sounded scary. <laughs> that did sound scary. But um, so right now she uh, she said that she's uh, she's not going to be able to give me anything. No rituximab, no nothing for the spleen. Um, she said that the uh, the normal size of a spleen is 12 centimeter, and mine is is only 14. It is enlarged, but not big enough. So I don't know where the pain is coming from. And um, she said that I am very welcome to go look for a second opinion. Um, because I was just sitting there and thinking while I was while I was waiting for her, I was actually um, was feeling so sick and I was gagging, you know, I was trying to um, I was like throwing up, but nothing's coming out. I was I was really feeling sick because I, I felt a pressure, a pretty bad pressure in my um, in my left side. So. I mean, where is it coming from? She said it could be bone because my I have also lesions in my in my um, ribs. I know bone pain. It's not bone pain. Um, I know how bone pain feels like. It's not. Well, maybe if she's going to tell me that it might be uh, coming from the lower part of my left lung, I might believe that. But she, um, and I did, you know, mention something about that, 
because I still have some fluid in my lung, in my uh, left lung, but um, it's not, I mean, it's not progressing. It's not um, enough for, to, to uh, do a thoracentesis procedure. So they're not touching it. It could be that, but it, it really feels like an organ pain. Like there's something, um, there's something in there and that's causing the pain. I mean, what are the other stuff that it's, what are the other organs that's in your left area? <laughs> so she said to, um, to go ahead and get a second opinion. She actually mentioned MD Anderson too. And I guess I will, you know, because if uh, they could not see anything and they could not explain uh, what my pains are, where my pain is coming from, I guess maybe I could um, find somebody else to uh, help me, you know, investigate it. Because I don't know. I don't know what to do. This means that <coughs> I'm going to be in pain. I'm going to be feeling this uh, for a while until I find a, uh, a, until I find out where it's coming from. Until I find somebody who, who will help me find out where it's coming from. Because that's the only way that we could be able to treat it. You know, it's kind of. It's really mind blowing that <laughs> I feel so much pain and nobody could could ever see where the pain is coming from. That's so that's the most frustrating part of um having an illness like this, having a disease like this, you know, it's just <sighs> but I'm one hundred percent sure that um that this is uh, not a bone pain because uh, that was the first pain that I felt when we found out about my cancer. I know bone pain. This ain't. So that's the, um, that's what happened today. So basically I went there to be told that, hey, you know what? It might just be in your head. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I'm I'm not sure if she believes me. Hopefully she believes me that I do feel the pain. But the only thing that they really could recommend me is to up my oxycodone, my pain medication. Because I'm taking 7.5 right now. So um, they're wanting me to do 10. So she suggested for me to call my palliative care doctor and um, ask what I could do maybe I can just you know chop chop my my 7.5 uh, like one and a half right one and a half yeah so I really don't want to because that thing makes me dizzy but if the pain because last night you know when I took the pain medication um, it did work some but not as good as before so yeah, but hey, you know what? I'm still alive and I'm still kicking. So I am going to start, I'm going to, I didn't sleep good last night. So once I get in the house, I am going to um, go get a little bit of uh, sleep, a little bit more sleep. And then after that, I'm going to start uh, researching about what we could do my husband agreed about you know um getting a second opinion maybe uh calling the md anderson and find out um the only thing that's really stopping me um in going to md anderson right now is number one is the cost and number two is you know me having to go over there for a few days but hey you know what i got in I got um, admitted in hospital for almost a month. Well, actually it was a month. So um, I think the initial uh, visit to MD Anderson is just maybe three, four days max. I think we could do that. Um, 
and also you know if I am going to go over there I'm gonna I'm gonna go there alone because um, my husband could not be able to go with me and um, he, he needs to stay with the uh, kids here in the house it's either that or all of us are going to have to go over there for five days if uh, MD Anderson is not going to allow me to go over there and um, be there for that many days uh, for the scans all by myself so yeah yep so I am going to go in the house now and get some sleep and so I could maybe you know it could help me feel better um, and you know look at my skin and that's what I was talking about about my skin being so dry yeah that's what I was talking about my skin gets like that when my blood goes really low and uh, somebody from the chat when I went live uh, the other day said the same thing that whenever he she's got leukemia and she has uh, you know skin issues too when hemoglobin goes low and also you know I read somewhere that if you have issues in your liver that could also be a part of the uh, symptoms the skin um, so I guess for me it's both <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go take a nap, guys. I'm so tired. Um, we'll give you guys an update, or maybe if I have time later on, we'll post uh, some more entertaining songs for you. For those who like uh, hearing me sing, thank you very much. Bye for now. <laughs>